Good morning. It's the conversation on your digital first Pan African News Network, TOS Television. Quite a beautiful morning here in Abuja. And of course, it's Monday, the start of a new week. My name is Sagir Ibrahim. And my name is Merciful Arjunamo. Good morning, Sagir. Good morning, Merciful. Welcome back. Uh -huh, you, you thank you. Smart, thank you. And, and you uh, as well. How was your break? Uh, I would like to call you break. Uh, just some time to rest. Okay. And I yeah, hope you got all the rest definitely, that you need. Definitely, definitely. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing quite well. Looking very sharp as always. Well, I didn't go on a break, so you're looking sharper. <laughs> <laughs> so break, it determines how sharp you look. Yeah, I think it does. It okay. should. All right, let's um, begin the morning with our usual morning motivation. And that's the quote of the day. There are certain moments in the day when I need my me time to just unwind and indulge. What is this? The Cadbury goodness is in every pack of Cadbury 3 in 1 hot chocolate, making you feel cheerful and pleasant. Enjoy the Cadbury goodness. All right, we move straight to the development scenes, uh, starting with Nigeria, where the electoral umpire INEC has cried um, to warn Nigerians about a fake online registration portal for continuous voter registration, CVR. Uh, the commission raised an alarm uh, in a statement released by its national commissioner and chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye, in Abuja on Friday. All right, we move over um, to Libya, where over 42,000 refugees Asylum seekers are in Libya. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees on Friday revealed that there were 42,210 registered refugees and asylum seekers in Libya presently. According to the UNHCR, a total of 20,799 refugees and immigrants have been rescued at sea and returned to Libya by the Libyan Coast Guard in 2021. Um, talking about updates from the Zambian election, opposition leader took an early lead in the country's presidential election over a long-time rival and incumbent, um, according to first results issued by the Electoral Commission on Saturday. Opposition candidate Hakinde, Hich Hakinde Hichilema tilled 171,604 votes, while the incumbent president garnered 110,178 from 15 of the Southern African countries, 156 constituencies. Um, moving up um, to a coronavirus story here, talking about Egypt confirming the first case of coronavirus. Now, Egypt has confirmed its first case in a foreigner who had been put into isolation in hospital. While confirming the case, WHO Eastern Mediterranean on its Twitter handle said the person was carrying the virus but had not shown any symptoms and was in a stable condition. Okay, and that's it for uh, the development scenes. We'll go on a quick breakdown starting with uh, COVID-19 updates from across Africa. dreamt of being in the spotlight as his mother it is my duty to help him live up to his dream that's why I give him born Vita every day which contains iron zinc and vitamin C that supports his immunity and gives him the strength to pursue his dreams born Vita strength to dream
You're still on to the conversation, showing on your digital first Pan-African news network. That is TOS Television. And like I always say, you can be a part of our social media community. Follow us across all our social media platforms at TOS TV Network on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And of course, on our website, www.tostvnetwork.com, you can catch all the programs and live stream it. It is the conversation, and this time we're talking about newspaper headlines of the show. And the first newspaper headline for this morning is uh, coming found on Daily Trust, and that's from the beginning, the very top, that's COVID-19. Buhari, two ministers, others go into isolation. And just besides that, six banks earn 14.2 billion naira from account maintenance fee. Now can be found on page 14. And then bandits release Chinese, three Yaori student teacher. That can be found on page six. Just on top of that, uh, we see school children in captivity. Salihu Tanko Islamic School, Tegina. And that's the seven, eight days that they've been in captivity. Uh, federal government college building Yaori uh, and Bethel Baptist High School, Kujama. Each of them have had 61 days and 43 days consecutively in captivity. Uh, the very gaping headline there is Plateau Killings, how Christian tricycle operator soldiers rescued us. That's coming from survivors. Uh, we have four riders. The first, 10 still missing as death toll rises to 27. Security rescue 36. Attack not by our members. That's coming from the Irigwe group. Uh, that's the Christian community in Jos. Uh, NSCIA, JNI, Murich call for probe. And IGP deploys tactical squad that can be found on page five just under the picture of the day there where we're seeing our uh, uh, major roads in just deserted that's after the 24-hour curfew announced by the, the governor of plateau state as simon along it says we're in dilemma says bono governor as 1500 insurgents surrender that can be found on page 37 and just underneath that 21 killed in jigawa bridge collapse uh, that can be found on page 37 as well kano approves nine hundred thousand dollars for agricultural development project. And then Taliban enters Afghan presidential palace after Ghani flees. That can be found on page 32 of the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, moving to the Daily Times newspaper this morning, we start with the banner headline there, which states, Northern Catholic Bishop laments wanton destruction, bloodletting. A couple of writers underneath says, Nigeria now most terrorized country in the world urge Christians to remain strong in their faith in God. Um, underneath the picture of the day there, we see Plato killings. Article urges government to give moral logistic support to security operatives. And beside that, we see 2023, a dead party cannot send me packing from government house, Governor Fintery Lambast, APC. And we also see what 17 billionaire tax evasion. Go after defaulting agencies, firms, Senate orders, Senate orders FIRS. Um, underneath that, we see Nigerian filmmakers lament as Netflix offers $90,000 for Nollywood, $500 million for Asian European films. And that could be found on page three. And that's the end of the headlines on the Daily Times newspaper this morning. We move over to the Nigerian News Direct the, from the very top, Deep Blue Project. Nimasa will ensure proper maintenance of assets. That's coming from Jamo and can be found on page 17. And Unilag Vice Chancellor calls for decentralization of TED Fund. That can be found on page 13. And VAT Collection FRS files appeal against court judgment. That can be found on page 2. The gaping headline there, that's the banner, is Commercial Banks Borrow 9.97 trillion naira from CBN in seven months. Uh, just uh, under the picture of the day there, federal government plans to employ audit firm for disclosed debt repayment. That's coming from Zachary, that can be found on page 20. And SEC reiterate commitment to clamp down on illegal capital market operators. That can be found on page 19. And then just underneath everything there, that's talking about the plateau crisis. Lalong imposes 24 hours coffee in Josh North. Uh, OBJ, now my father, coming from Abiodun. And this can be found on page 3 of the Nigerian News Direct. For the Blueprint newspaper, we see Joss Killing, police deploy crack team, rescue 33. Um, a couple of writers underneath that, we see NSCIA, CAN, NGF, GNI condemns attack, cautions on reprisal. Uh, five killed, nine houses, three vehicles burnt in Kaduna attack. Beside that, we see BVN responsible for rise in unclaimed dividends, says SEC. FIRS appeals court judgment on VAT collection. Uh, Badaru Bagudu Buniwu Ladoja to join APC. 
for uh, the gaping headline there, we see 2023. I didn't rule out Atiku Tinubu, and that's by IBB. Says, I only talked on what to look out for in the president. Babangida emboldened Jonathan takeover of Yeradua presidency, and that's by Otedola. Felicitate with elder statesman at 80. That could be found on page 6. Uh, we see the picture of the day there where uh, the Jigawa Bridge collapse claims 11 army applicants, 10 others. Only 26-year-old Simon Chin Chinapi survive. And that's by the police and could be found on page 5. I'm on any dialogue line. We see Quara kidnapped victim dies after 4 million naira ransom for abducted in Abuja. Naptip Nabs, man for sexual trafficking of 21-year-old lover. A repentant insurgent surrender poses new challenge, and that's by the Borno State Governor, and Babagana Zulum. And finally, on the, business, on the Blueprint newspaper, we'll see NDLEA arrest Italy-bound woman with 100 wraps of heroin at Lagos Airport. So, merciful, I want to ask this question. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we see a couple of headlines here today. First of all, I think, I think the number of repentant insurgents we've been having has been quite much, you know, in recent yes. times. Because I think yes. last week, has been a thousand, a thousand surrendered. And we're seeing this week, another 1,500 surrendering. And I think the previous week also, a couple also surrendered. So we are seeing insurgents surrendering in their thousand. Now, the question I want to ask is, why now? And why the large number of insurgents surrendering at this time? Is, is the government doing something right? You know, it has always been an issue of controversy, okay. you know, even before when we're talking about everybody laying down their arms and, you know, the, the, the bandits coming out and, and, and everything. And people are like, no, why would you forgive them and everything? But let's, let's just fast forward to the recent times where we're having different reports, news media coming out to give us numbers and, 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 and everything. Yeah. The thing is, when people start to see that, um, people who have done something are not uh, being uh, are not to an extent facing justice. Mm. It's it's a motivation. Now, don't get me wrong. Coming out to lay your arms down and say, "Oh look, look, you're you're trying to change your ways now and everything," is actually good. It's actually all the good it can do. But people needed people to come out first. Mm. Yes, the bad guys needed some examples first to say, "Oh." Are these people really, is, Niger, is the Nigerian government really true to their words? Yes, to say, look, yes. everybody should come out and don't worry, we're going to make, make sure you're catered for, we can even put in a rehabilitation center and everything. So the more you see, if, if you were, if, if I was in, in that situation and, and I'm not sure of how I'm going to spend my money and, you know, even if they are, they are being paid money or whatever enjoyment or benefits they are getting and everything, yes. but there's no freedom. Because you keep seeing the Nigerian army coming every day, there is no peace. So it's just normal for people to try to find peace in the best way possible. Okay, so I saw on the Daily Trust newspaper, I mean, mm -hmm. Salih Tanku Islamic School, Tegina, the students there who were abducted, they've been in captivity for 78 days. And the Federal Government College students from Bin and Yauri have been in captivity for 61 days. And the Better Baptist High School students in Kujama have been in captivity for 43 days. Now, I'm all of these numbers um, because... and people are coming out and exactly. laying down. So, now, aside that, you know, last week we heard of the kidnap of the Commissioner of Information for Niger State. Mm -hmm. Just five days later, I heard he was released. You know, he was kidnapped in Niger State. How come we don't see the same actions being taken to ensure that those students from Tegina who were also abducted? Have know, been released. released I mean, they've been in captivity for over 60 days now. So what is being done to ensure that these students are released just as fast as the Commissioner for Information is released? Is the life of the Commissioner of, of Information more, more important, important than, than the life of the Nigeria. students? I mean, the students are supposed to be the future of the state as well as of the nation. Now, we have a Commissioner who was kidnapped. Within how many days, you know, all efforts was put in to ensure he was released. Why are we not seeing a reciprocation these are the of those efforts? These are the you know, questions why that are these students Nigerians not are being asking. released? And True. then we are seeing a very large number of insurgents who are coming in, who are saying... Coming okay, out fine, in their numbers. Out and they are, they, are, they are surrendering, saying, we no longer want to do this anymore. Now, the federal government has to bear the responsibility of 
taking uh, of rehabilitating of uh, reintegrating them and uh, what, feeding them as exactly. well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think there are three R's: rehabilitation, reintegration, and uh, reformation. Reformation. Yeah. Three of they, they need to carry out all of these responsibilities of the, on the insurgent, and then we have students who are still in captivity, so and nothing is being done about it. The question is: we, we now begin to question the intelligence officers the ones who have the burden to garner information. Because if we see people coming out from a state camp, if really, because these are the questions Nigerians are asking, if we're having people coming out from the bandits yes, camp yes. and they cannot provide information, then are they really the bandits? Are they really surrendering? That's the question we're asking because, yes, look at the numbers we have seen, 78, 61, 43. Those are not, they are not animals. That is not 3 They are human beings. Trust me. So I, I I really think there's so much as expected from the Nigerian army. There's so much as expected from from the off officers, the people in charge of guard, of gathering the in, in, in information, because already there's so much talks that's going on. Trust mm. me. Let's hope um, the government brings all of this into consideration and, and release the, the people, release right? The children, yes. All right, that's the most we can take uh, on the newspaper headline segment of the show this morning. We're going to short break now. When we return, we'll bring you the big story. Don't go anywhere. size find it with the new etel data plans dial star 141 hash now to get the plan that suits you airtel the smartphone network It's still the conversation on your digital first Pan African news network, 2S Television. And of course, I like I always say, you can be a part of our social media community. Stay updated and follow us across all our social media platforms at TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And of course, our YouTube, TOS TV Network. Like and subscribe so you do not miss out on our amazing content. It's the big story, the crux of the show this morning. And we're going to be discussing the security situation in just northern Nigeria. Joining us via the phone is Comrade Wahid Saka, a public affairs analyst. You're welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much for joining, sir. Hello, hello, Comrade, can you hear us? Comrade, yes, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank, good morning. Thank, thank, you, so morning. thank you for joining us, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So, um, what do you make of the recent killings in Jos uh, Plateau State, Nigeria? Uh, the, the, the issue of Jos Plateau State has become um, uh, it's a sad story. And uh, Jos has become a killing feed. The un, uh, unnecessary, but uh, unabated reprisal attack in just is a call for concern. And as a matter of fact, the government at the federal and the state in Plateau State are failing the people. We cannot continue to waste precious lives of our own people. The killing, the recent one, has called for a total review of, of our security apparatus. Hmm. It's called for a total review of people we even put in government. It actually calls for a serious liberation among our people too. Because security for all and by all will serve as a seed for everybody. Is such is uh, practically 
uh, a, a, a crime against humanity. And every concerned Nigeria must rise up against the killings that is ravaging our country. Hmm. It is bad. It is totally antithetical to everything democratic and is grossly affecting our democratic culture. People are resorting to serve up when they don't see the help of the people in government. Okay. So when they don't see the help of security. As long as you cannot continue to justify this, our people should know that a peaceful society is a prosperous society. Okay. A society whereby we don't we don't value the life of our people okay. is a society that cannot develop. Okay. So I'm putting it to government at the federal and the state level in Plateau and surrounding states that the primary responsibility they hold our people is to secure them. Okay. And if they cannot do that, then they should voluntarily resign out of government. Mm. And these people, the Commissioner of Police in Plateau State and the Inspector of Police in Nigeria, if they don't know that the, the, the killings is questioning their job, then they should resign too. Okay. We cannot continue to allow people to be led to slaughter slab, just like a ram. Okay, comrade, I want to I want to ask you this question. So up until mm -hmm. now, the governor of uh, Plateau State, that's Governor Simon Lalong, has declared a 24-hour curfew to see how the state can manage the situation. So in your opinion, do you think that the curfew that was announced by the governor is a, it, the measure is enough to ensure that the spate of killings is abated? The uh Incessant uh, declaration of uh, curfew anywhere after any attack is escapist. Okay. The deed has been done in Yoruba land. They say, literally, a, a knife that caught the hand of a, uh, a child and you throw the knife away. The deed has already been done. No, but, comrade, you know, he did that to ensure that um, there are no reprisals. So that's why I'm asking if the measure is good enough to ensure that the killing does not continue. So in your opinion, what will do you think? Will, will it declare COVID forever? Huh. A total approach that is more than COVID should be included in such any, in, in whatever they want to do in play to state today. Okay, so talk you to You remember us, some village has been under serious attack yes. in recent memory. Therefore, if an attack happened today, a refusal attack cannot happen the following day because some people will still, will still be money their own, uh, they, they are dead. Therefore, now is the time to call all parties concerned and find a lasting peace beyond the issue of uh, uh, what do they call it now. You have the issue of uh, rhetoric of we are uh, 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 declaring curfew. Mm. That is too escapist. Mm. Our people deserve more. This country deserves more. Every killing in this country is putting a dagger to our collective unity. Okay. Mm. So, come and we cannot afford to collapse this country. Okay, so I want to ask a follow-up to that. What, what do you have to say to um, the quarters of people who have been giving the spate of killings a religious coloration? Because I feel it's an issue that we need to address. So let's hear your opinion on that. They are also part of the problem. We need people that will be part of the solution. If you are giving coloration to any killings, any killings anywhere diminish our humanity. Mm. Mm. It doesn't have to be a Christian or a Muslim or a pagan. Nobody deserves to die. Nobody deserves an uh, uh, untimely death. Nobody mm. deserves to be slaughtered like ram. Mm. This issue is about humanity. 
whosoever kill anybody deserves no mercy. Mm. Our government should do more. Our government should also curb the issue of rhetoric among the uh, religious clerics. Mm. This country will only survive if we turn down our anti people cleric, anti religious cleric, anti ethnic cleric, I mean, anti ethnic uh, rhetoric. We must stop it. Okay. Yeah, because and collectively, we can only do this country if we don't throw that line. Okay. Because I... everybody killed diminishes our humanity. Yes, yes. Because I do know that according to report, you know, um, people have blamed the killings, um, the attacks, um, on the Christian community. That's the Irigwe community mm -hmm. in Plateau State. But they, they have come out to say that they're not the ones um who have done that attack yeah so so the the question now now remains like who are the people who are responsible who are the people that are behind the attack and simon lalong the governor of plateau state is also saying that look no coloration should be given to the issue so if if we do not have if we do not have uh, we, we cannot name the people responsible how fast can we get to the bottom of all of this yes please in one minute comrade because we're actually running so, out so of time. everybody so everybody that put coloration into this they have given uh, a, uh the security that will trail the culprit they uh, they have given them what we call in your land the go -di -di. you don't give why you don't know what to do hmm? why you don't know who and who commit a crime let the security do their job Mm -hmm. And they must do it thoroughly and find a lasting solution to these current feelings. We deserve more than this. And may God bless this other Republic of Nigeria. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, comrade, for staying with us on the conversation this morning. It's been an insightful one. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, comrade, for joining us. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you, um, viewers, for staying tuned to the conversation this morning. Uh, like I always say, you can always drop your contributions, your comments, questions, and issues. You know, just drop them on our social media platform that is at TOS TV Network across all the social media platforms displayed on your screen. And also, don't forget, you can always, 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 always live stream the program on our website and other programs as well on www.tostvnetwork.com. Thank you again. I am Merciful Arjuna. And I am Sagir Ibrahim. Thank you so much for watching and see you tomorrow. <laughs>